Welcome to Eurythmy as a Personal Practice. This is the third lesson in Webinar Series 2, 2020. Great. Happy to see you again this morning. Here we are, another hot day, 100 degrees in California. And um, as I'm talking, I hope that you're signing yourselves in and giving your greetings to one another. At the end of the class, I'll come over and look at some of the chats and my co-host Michelle will also help me to answer any questions that you're putting in the chat. As you may know, while I'm talking to you, I'm not reading the chats. If there's an urgent problem coming on, my co-host Michelle will find it and she'll be able to tell me that something's going on, but I think we're doing fine. So how long have we been into this coronavirus? Months and months. And this morning, unfortunately, I heard that the country is going to have to consider continuing, even increasing the lockdown mandates because things are more or less out of control. And listening to that, I had to be so grateful for what we're doing here with Eurythmy. It's a small but very valuable contribution to this journey, this opportunity that I find that the COVID virus is giving us, along with all the pain, along with all the suffering, along with all the challenges. It also gives us a really unexpected and unique opportunity to go deep, to work on ourselves, to choose the things that are of deep value that we want to put into lives and to cultivate them, including this Eurythmy practice, including spiritual growth, including meditative practices. And so let's all do our best to take advantage of this time. I hope you'll feel impelled to do a Eurythmy practice every day, at least once a week. I've also been working with Michelle and a couple of other people to design future journeys with this Eurythmy online project. And at the end of the course, at the end of today, I'll come back and tell you a little bit more about that because I'd love to give you as many tools as it's possible for me to give you as we go ahead. So um, this week, I went to see my acupuncturist and I was talking to him, a wonderful man, Waldorf parent. And I was talking to him about some of my experiences about Eurythmy. How, for instance, when I put my arms out, I know where my arm is going to be before I move it. And I just slide my arms into position. Like when I do light streams upwards, I know they're going to be there and I slide into it. My wonderful acupuncturist said, really, do you do that in Eurythmy? I thought we only did that in the Chinese medical practices, the Chinese movement practices, because we understand that there's a spiritual body. I said, but of course, this is what Eurythmy is about. And so I want to give you also that little nudge. As we move, we know where we're going because Eurythmy is a practice of body, soul, and spirit or self feeling, astral body, etheric body, and physical body. And in Eurythmy, everything is directed by your core consciousness. So I know where I'm going to go. I feel the appropriate thing. I slide into the movements. I'm there. Body, soul, and spirit are all aligned. I know it takes a while to come to that. Part of the process is that the self has to allow this harmony to come about. And in the beginning, it's hard because we are used to doing reflective thinking. We put our arms there and think, am I feeling light? But in fact, in your rhythm, in time, you develop the capacity to do it the other way. From inside, I intend light, I feel light, I move light. Let me just say also, this is something that is possible to teach to adults. And a couple of you have asked me if you can do this with your children. It's a little too conscious for them and we don't expect the children to be able to deliberately choose lightness. 
When we teach children, we make games about fairies and lightness and sunshine and happiness, and then they can easily move into that. But what I'm asking you to do with an adult, as an adult, is to choose where you're going, feel it, slide into it. All right, with that as a, an introduction, let's look at what we're going to do today. I'm going to take another big step today with you, introduce an exercise that will take quite a bit of time. And so we're going to start with our warm-up exercises, the furs, then weight bears downwards, then angel wings, then contraction expansion, threefold walking, and we'll go through these without the kind of warm-ups that we have developed in the previous weeks. And then we'll go on to the next new exercise, working with the pentagram, the star. Therefore, if you're a new participant, you won't get all of the buildup that you need. And please go back and find these other lessons on YouTube. Follow the link that I'm going to send you today at the end of this class. And then on the same channel, my YouTube channel, you'll be able to find the exercises from the two previous weeks. Therefore, let's begin. Once again, I'm going to move my screen first before we start here. There we go. I'm going to begin with the Eurythmy Movement Meditation. And as I've told you before, as a Eurythmist, I talk with my hands. So as I say this verse to you, I'm going to be moving my hands, kind of pointing to or indicating the points of myself that I'm thinking of. You don't need to move them. You don't need to imitate this one, although you may if you want to. The Eurythmy Meditation. I seek within me creative forces working creative powers living. The heavy weight of earth tells me through the word of my feet. The forming power of the air tells me through the singing of my hands. The strength of heaven's light tells me through the thinking of my head how the great world in the human being speaks, sings, thinks. I'll take a moment to center. Now I begin my practice, choosing from many different beginnings that I can use. I'll do the one that I've worked on with you, weight bears downwards and light streams upwards. I stand in silence. I feel weight. I see where my leg will go and I position myself. Weight bears downwards. I see the light. I intend the light. I move into it. Light streams upwards. I feel the two extremes. And I focus myself on the third position as well. And I feel in the middle, I hold the balance. Release, release. Twice more. You remember these are experiences of color. I feel weight. I imagine blue. I move with blue dynamic down into gravity. Weight bears downwards, and I know that my center point is here. I think light, I intend light, I intend yellow. I know where my hands will land, light streams upwards. Where the two triangles overlap, I feel the green. In the middle, I hold the balance. Release. Release. A third time. Weight bears downwards. 
light streams upwards. In the middle, I hold the balance. Release and release. I feel centered. If at home, you need to do that more often when you're practicing, that's fine. Slower, faster, either way is perfect. Now, remember the experience of the backspace that we've been practicing. Imagine your angel wings. Lift your arms above your head. Cross them behind you. And now, as if these great wings are opening behind you and closing, make this great movement, centering your feeling in your shoulder blades. And again, see how that makes you breathe. And again, good. Now, remember what we're trying to do with the counter movement, the etheric movement that will rise in complementary movement to what you're doing. So an invisible pair of angel wings is folded down here below you and those wings rise as your wings fall. Now your back space is extra strong and continue this. And fine and continue with that as long as you want. And now we'll transition into contraction expansion. Feeling from your heart to this big space that you've opened, wing-like, bring light into your heart. Within my heart shines the light of the sun. Within my heart, and feeling this, fill your heart, feel, feel it and fill it, weaves the warmth of the world. I will breathe. Now share the content of your soul, your biography with the world. I will breathe the light of the sun be sure to keep your head steady. Don't look up. Feel the whole wing space as you move. I will feel the warmth of the world. Light of the sun pour into me. And warmth of the world. Now we can drop our wings and feel your back space illuminated. Warmth of the world flow through me. If you have also been practicing the ah reverence exercise that we've worked on already, at this point, you might feel that same sort of feeling open in your back, centered between front and back space. We'll build on this by walking forwards and backwards. Spread your wings wide. Take perhaps four steps forward, touching with your toes first as you go, learning to be aware of all the points of your body as you move etherically. Within my heart. Remember to feel your back before you move backwards. Unfold your wings like angel wings. Then my heart shines the light of the sun within my soul. Feel your back, weaves the warmth of the world. I will breathe the light of the sun. I will feel 
the warmth of the world. Light of the sun pour into me. And warmth of the world flow through me. Always take a moment to feel the resonance in yourself before moving on. Now we'll remember the threefold walking practice. We'll just lay the foundation for that here again. Light in your head, intention, warm love in your heart. Now, power in your feet. What I said that we do with your hands when we move into space, we see where we're going before we're going. With threefold walking, the task is to have that same kind of imagination way down there in the feet. This is how this walking exercise grounds us into our legs. So let's put our intention there or allow it to be born there and four steps forward. Lift, carry, place. Lift, carry, place. Lift, carry, place. Lift, carry, place. Before I go back, I open my backspace, lift, carry, place, lift, carry, place, lift, carry, place, lift, carry, place. Now we'll practice going to the right side, feeling all these surfaces of the body. Lift, carry, place, lift, carry, place, lift, carry, place, carry, place, and now to the left. And I'll, with this one, my choice here, but it is a choice, not automatic, I'll initiate going to the side by lifting up that open step again. I could have started with a cross step. Place, lift, carry, place, feet together, backwards, open the back space, place, carry, place, carry, place, carry, place, moving forward, carry, place, carry, place. I need to ask you again, are you breathing? This is so intense, but you must really practice being relaxed as you do it. Now, four steps to the left. Here's a choice. Do I start with a cross step or an open step? I'll start with an open step, but it's neither one is better than the other. I make my cross steps in front. Notice that some of you asked. Carry, place, lift, carry, place. And now going back, I'll start with uncrossing this leg. Place, crossing in front, place, carry, place, feet together. Dear friends, the threefold walking deserves to be done for a long time when you have time to work with it. And I mentioned to one of my webinars a few weeks ago that when Rudolf Steiner gave this, he said it really harmonizes the etheric body. And my Eurythmies, my Eurythmy teacher's teacher was a beloved student of Rudolf Steiner. At a, one point, she had breast cancer and she asked Rudolf Steiner what to do. This was before he had developed Iskador and the anthroposophical medicines. But he told her to work on harmonizing herself by first, reading philosophy, difficult, difficult Greek philosophy, like Aristotle, every day for one hour, and to do threefold walking every day for an hour. And in that threefold walking, to learn to let the whole breath and blood system, what we call the rhythmic system, 
become harmonized. Later, you can do different things with your arms, but I bring you this picture so that you understand why it's important to practice it. Last week, we developed this practice of how to move forwards and backwards. Now we're going to take the next step. I indicated this last week, we're going to work with diagonals. But before we do, we're going to lay the, or create our task by creating a pentagram or a star. The pentagram is, we can say in a very powerful and simple sentence, the archetypal shape of the human etheric body. The etheric flows through our body. And so I invite you first of all to stand and feel yourself as a star. In this star position, please have your hands at heart height, not up here, so that in as much as possible, we want the distances between the five points of the star of the pentagon to be equal. And now what I want you to think is how the lines of the light would be drawn if you start at the head. Start at the head, you would draw a pentagram by going down to the right foot, your right foot, not mine, right? Over to your left arm, across to your right arm, diagonally down to your left foot, and back to your head. Now you're a complete star. Okay, and rest. I'll turn around in a moment and show you, but we'll do this again like this. Open arms from your head to your, your right foot, left arm, the right arm. Imagine a line of light sinking here and then back to your head and shine. Good. These are energy streams sinking from the head into the wheel over to the rhythmic system, down into the wheel again and returning to the head and we are complete. Let me turn around and I'll do it twice with my back to you because that might make it easier for you to follow which way I'm moving. From your head to your right foot, to your left arm, see the whole line of light traveling across your chest to your right arm. Let the line of light travel through your abdomen down to your foot. From your foot, let it travel through your abdomen, past your heart, up to your head. And release. For those of you who are attentive, you'll notice how many times we're crossing the midline. That's one of the reasons why this is very therapeutic, it really works on your body geometry. So from your head down to your right foot, you cross the midline as you sink this horizontal midline, right foot. From below, you cross the vertical midline and the horizontal midline to come to the left arm. Side to side, you cross the vertical midline. Down to your left foot, you cross the vertical and the horizontal midlines, back to your head. And release, and release. For the parents that are out there, possibly the teachers, we teach this way of doing the star, starting with the nine-year-old child. It's very, very helpful for them to learn how to feel their body geography. And so many adults are still having a hard time finding this geography accurately. So it's good for you too. We're going to walk the star next, but I need to give you some help with this. So this is a star. From, sorry. There we go. From the head to the foot. 
to the arm, to the other arm, to the foot, and back to the head. This star is right side up. Last week, I showed you that if I'm going to draw choreography for you, I have to turn it upside down. Now, I fully expect that you will get a little confused with this, but let's do our best. You're standing here. And you are going to go from your head. So first of all, as you make your Eurythmy form, you're going to imagine that you are lying on the floor. I should do this here again. Turn it this way, friends. Imagine me lying on the floor. My head is here, my two feet here, my two arms there. Can you imagine that? Now you're at your screen. And so from your perspective, if you were to use this blackboard, your head would be there far away from the screen and your feet would be closer to the screen. We'll deal with that in a minute. Let me show you what I do as the teacher. So we have to mirror one another. I am in the back of the room. I'm going to walk towards where my right, where my imagined right foot is if I were lying on the floor. And then to where my left arm is diagonally back. And then to where my right arm is, straight sideways. And then diagonally forward. And then back to where I started. All with equal lines, all the diagonals. See, that's really what I did. I started back here, I walked towards you, away from you, sideways, towards you, and away from you. Now, I'll put it like this for you. You are far away from the screen. You're going to walk to your right foot. If you were lying down, facing the screen, then your right foot would be over here. So you're going to write, walk diagonally forward to your right foot, diagonally back to your left arm, across to your right arm, diagonally forward to your left foot, back to the head. And yes, you are doing threefold walking while you do this as well, but we won't be too demanding about that right now. Once again, from the head, to the foot, to the arm, to the other arm, to the foot, to the head. Right? How many steps? I like to do five steps. If your space is very small, three steps works. I don't like to do an odd number of steps. I like to do an even number of steps. Here we go. From the head, diagonally to your right, to your foot. Feel your back space as you go backwards to the left. Feel your side shoulder, right. Diagonally forward to your left and diagonally back to your beginning spot. Now, good thing you'll have the YouTube video so you can understand how to practice that. And if you've opened the PDF file, you've seen that that's all explained in great detail on the PDF file. So you've got trusty help. I'm going to turn my back now and three times I'll do that. So I am with you. Don't mirror me now. Go along with me in the direction that I'm going. So I imagine that my computer's in front of me. My star is in front of me. My feet are there. My hands are there if I were lying down. That means I would be like that, right? So from my beginning place, the head of my star, I walk diagonally to the right. Now I open my back space, diagonally to the left. I open my side space, diagonally to the right, 
diagonally to the left and back to my home. Because I have eyes in my back, because I've done my angel wings, I can get there accurately. Why are we doing this? To order the etheric space, cross the midlines, strengthen the etheric body. Again, one, two, three. 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 Now your assignment is to practice this so that you know where you're going before you get there. Just like we practice with the arms, you know where you'll put the arm. Before you move your arm, you know you're going there. One, two, three. That line, you see the line of light and you travel it. You see that line of light, travel it. That one, travel back to the beginning. Two, three. And rest. Practicing straight lines, forms, orders our thinking. We know many people, some of you probably, many people in the world have some degree of chaotic thinking, disordered thoughts. This creates such objective clarity and imprints that clarity through all of your bodies body, soul, and spirit, so that you're clear thinking, objective. It's really worth practicing thinking with your body. One more time, and this time I won't do it with you, give it a try. From your head to the right foot, left arm, right arm, left foot, and back to the head. Next week, or the week after, we're going to make it even more interesting by doing a circle around the star. If you're quite ambitious, you can try already. But we also understand the principle that alternating straight lines and curves is tremendously strengthening for the etheric body. And so if we have children in a school or if we're working with patients, we will deliberately give them exercises where they have to alternate between straight lines and curves. For you though, we'll begin just with the straight line exercise. Now, I want to go to the next exercise and open the wonderful door of the vowels again. Last week, we started by speaking about how the vowels express the soul of the human being, our relationship to the world around us in wonder, in focus, and so on. Last week, we learned two vowels, the ah and the oo. Today, we're going to go through all five of the primary vowels, A, A, E, O, U. This is the sequence that the vowels appear in the Romance languages, in the alphabet. It's also the sequence that the vowels are spoken in the mouth. Let me approach the screen for a moment and then uh, describe that a little better. A is here in the back of the throat, A. A is spoken, you can feel it a little further in the throat. The E, E, we have to make our mouth much straighter, E. O, we engage the lips, O, rounding them. And then O, we squeeze the lips together and push them forward. So in the sequence of this, the vowels that I just told you, we move from the back of the throat to the front of the throat. I mention that because we have an exact corollary, of course, in the Eurythmy experiences. The ah is the most receptive and the oo is the most outstreaming. 
This is, by the way, also the secret behind the sacred word Aum. So now we're going to move through these five sequential experiences. We begin, like we did last week, with experiencing wonder, the archetype of the awe. Ah. As you with me, moves from spirit through emotion, soul, into the etheric, into the body. We begin by feeling what is wonder and imaginative, we imagine, we think of something that we want to open ourselves to. And then we express awe, wonder in this open angle. As I said last week, the angle, the size of the angle is important. If it's too big, it's uh, if it's too small, it's uh, but ah, uh, what does it take to make a perfect size? Having learned what the size of the ah uh, is, I see it before I move into it. And I find it. I let it ring out and then it's finished. Just like when I speak, the breath only lasts for so long before the sound dissipates into the air. So again, remember you don't speak, never will you speak in your rhythm, but you'll hear the sound that you're imprinting onto the space. And it's very likely that you might hear my voice, but that's not necessary in your head, I mean. But here you go. I will say it this time, but don't you? You have the job of creating wonder. Ah. Oh. Some of you might ask, is this the same as light streams upward? It's related, but this is more powerful. Light streams upward is just geometry. And this is filled with the quality of speech and meaning. So again, Ah, now we're going to move this angle from above below, creating many ahs, a sequence of them. Ah, surrounded by the mood of wonder. Take this week to practice finding wonder. We'll move on to the next sound. If we lived in awe for our whole lives, we would be perhaps simple-minded, childlike. But very early in the child's development, they have to separate from the world to open the eyes of the senses. The visual axis has to cross and they start touching each other. And every touch means we feel ourselves. In awe, we just feel the world. In A, we feel, oh, that's the world, and this is me. So let's learn the sound ah. A, A. Begin with the ah. Again, open your arms. Ah. And now imagine your two arms here are touching stars, way beyond your fingertips. And now you're going to bring these rays of outstreaming energy together so they'll cross. My arms are starting to cross, starting to cross. The crossing point is coming more and more and more close to me. Finally, they touch. I even have a little pressure against my arms and I feel upright. Oh, here I am. I'm inside myself. You're outside. This is A. Again, I feel wonder, ah. I feel separation, A. Separation can be wholesome, it's healthy boundaries. It can also be com combative, fighting. But we'll try to learn it in a neutral way at this point. Ah, A. Hey. 
Oh. Hey. Oh. Hey. Perhaps lower. Oh. Hey. Oh. Hey. And perhaps even lower. Oh. Hey. We use this A experience a lot when we have uh, patients who are anemic. Whenever we need to strengthen this martial quality, this iron quality, we develop series of exercises around the A. Sometimes we'll even do them with the legs. That's too much for us right now. But we have to learn to relish this feeling of being present through the A. Now we'll move on to the E. In the A, I haven't yet discovered who I am, discovered who I'm not. I'm not the world and I'm back here. But at this point, I'm defining my experience by what, by my relationship to the world. With the next sound, the E, I have to go into my core. And from my core, I feel I am a witness, I am a present, presence, God lives inside me, I am awake. Inside myself, I am building my life story, my biography. In the middle, I hold the balance. So to prepare for the E, bring your hands to your heart. In quiet, listen for your inner voice. Now with this E, very straight line sound, we're going to practice feeling how we hold the center in ourselves even when stretched between polarities. E. Now you can feel the dynamic tension here. The head should be straight. And it's always fun when I teach a class to say, are you more this kind of person or are you more that kind of person? Because we have people who love the light so much or people who are stuck in the darkness. And in the E, we learn to hold the balance between the middle. Doesn't matter if right arm is up or left, we should practice both. So let's do the opposite this time. From inside, Practice holding the balance even as you shine. E. Nice. You can also be right and left like this. E. Or the other way. E. Can also be front and back. E. Always, it's the heart that's holding the balance. And the journey is to feel the heart while you're moving, sliding into this position all the way. Once you've got the position, it's done, release. Let's go back to the up down. E. And the other arm. And rest. So there's your third task. Your job this week is to practice doing them authentically. If we were in a class together, I would be, or your teacher would be coaching you to say, oh, how can you do that better? How can you feel it better? But you are on your own to internalize these lessons as much as you can and then discover how these archetypes are living in you and how you can grow ever more to do them more archetypally, more perfectly. 
We'll move on now to the O. The O is the fourth sound. And this is where we move beyond individualism to community, where we say, my life's not the most important one. What we do together is important. A whole circle of people it's around the world in COVID, COVID life. So here, from my heart, I give up my own self-importance and I move out to the right and the left and all the way around to the front and make the most round O that I can. The fingers touch lightly. And now my journey is to feel that I'm not over loving and I'm not flat. I have a buoyant, wise, beautiful O. And release. In this O, I imagine my household, my community, the whole world, the whole universe. I build circles of love. Oh. And this, ex this energy should be buoyant, not heavy, buoyant, with well being, joy. And again, oh, and rest. And again, oh. your fourth lesson. Practice finding the movement from self to community. Now finally the ooh as we learned last week. And we have roots in the earth, roots in the sky if you will. So ooh is parallelism. Squeeze your arms or hold them well together. Create like a tube of light to stand in. Let your energy begin below you as if you have roots going from your hands into the earth. And you feel the power in your legs with this. And now stream without losing your ground. So my feet are so grounded you couldn't push me over. But at the same time, I connect to the roots above. I am a citizen of heaven and earth. Do your best not to hunch your shoulders up like that. Do your best to keep them down and parallel. And we can take that down again. We can move them up again. And down. And rest. Now you have the five major vowels. Other vowels are combination vowels, impure vowels, but these are the strong ones. So let's go through them as a series. A, A, E, O, U. And this is how you can work with them at home. Always prepare your feeling and then wonder. Hearing in your inner voice, ah, change, a, change, e, change, o. And again, ah, a, e, o, o. 
and rest. We'll do it a third time. And on your handouts, I gave you a small verse that we use when we do this with young children as they're just getting to meet the vowels for the beginning. You can find it on your handouts. But we say, we teachers say to them, guard it from harm. Ah. Oh. We do an A above the head. Cared for by angels. A. Here stand we. Those little children, I go, here stand we. Little E. Loving and strong. And with the children, I start with the U above. Truthful and good. That's the U. Yeah. Let me do that once more with you. Ah, oh, guarded from harm, cared for by angels, here stand we, loving and strong, truthful and good. And then if I'm doing that with children, I usually do it to end a class, and at that time I would fold my arms with them. With this, you have a wonderful big practice for what to work on. And next week, we will do the vowels with the five pointed star. And in preparation for that this week, your next step will be to practice walking with the vowels. So can you walk this carry place in the movement, in the mood of ah, forwards and backwards? Can you? Change your feeling to be in the mood of A and walk forwards. And you don't have to cross your legs, but move with this powerful feeling A. A. Now, can you move with the feeling of E? E. Really strong head to foot. E. Can you move with the feeling of O? O. O. And then, can you move with the feeling of O? O. Yeah. What are we doing here? I invite you to put that into your practice so that you can feel that you are the master of your own feelings, your own emotions, your own expressions all the way down into your legs. And so you understand even more clearly, this is not an A, ah, this is not an E, that's not an A, but it is the whole mood of A ah that comes to expression in a gesture and in the way that you move. So later when we do the five pointed star, it will look like this. And that we practice deeply feeling how we move in each of these different feelings, vowels. 
Now, as we approach the last minutes of this, I want to turn once again to the hallelujah. I wrote some things on your paper about this, where we're going next. And I started by introducing the concept of words. Words are the names of things or activities woven together out of many sounds. And if perhaps in the past there was an archetypal language, then the words that belong to things, bushes and trees and so on, used archetypal sounds to express what those things were. Now with so many different languages, the combined activity of all the languages all the good words in all the different languages will describe all the different facets of trees and different systems and flowers and so on and so on. But there are also many words that are not so good. As I wrote in this paper, for instance, television. It's not really such a living word, analytical. It's, it doesn't have the sculptural qualities that true words have. And that's even the origin of what magic spells were once upon a time. So as Eurythmus, we begin by learning the sounds and then move on to weaving words together. And then in therapy, what we do is find the so-called word or combination of sounds that belongs to an individual patient's journey. But with the study of sounds and Eurythmy, we begin, we're going to take our first step to learn the first sound that Rudolf, the first word that Rudolf Steiner taught, which was the word hallelujah, this ancient Hebrew word of praise and thanksgiving. And now that we've learned all of the vowels, next week we'll be able to learn all of the hallelujah. But today, we're just going to dive into the central part of the hallelujah once more like we did last week and do a series of seven L's. You'll remember that the L is a sound of transformation and cleaning, cleansing and purifying. So we imagine that we have seven centers to purify. When Rudolf Steiner taught this, he didn't speak about chakras. I suppose we could but we are not going to talk necessarily about the root chakra and the kundalini. We have a different direction here. We speak about the feet, the knees, the metabolism, the heart, the throat, the third eye, and the whole crown and the whole self. So we imagine that we have healing water below us. And with the L, which we've learned already a little bit, we're going to etherically wash these seven centers. That will be then, the more, when we're done with that, we'll fold our arms to close and we'll enter into conversation for a few moments. So I imagine cleansing water below my feet and all around the world we are joined in this activity. Little L, deep and low, we cleanse our feet. The next L is a little bit larger, compressing, growing. We cleanse our knees. Again, we cleanse our metabolism. The fourth one opens like a blossom of the heart. We cleanse our heart. We cleanse the throat. We cleanse our speech. With the third eye, we feel we cleanse our thinking. We cleanse our whole self. Just stand in that for a moment. Letting that journey resound in you. Now fold your arms. Thank you. As I said, at the end of every Eurythmy experience, you must take a moment to reflect on what you've been through. Lest 
you just throw it away and it disperses. When we have you with me, patients, we have them lie down. So after such a session, we would have you lie down for half an hour after this. And when you are doing your eurythmy at home, you're more than welcome to lie down and do that. So we, I'm coming back to the board here. And first of all, we're, I'm going to take some questions in a second. And um, I want to first tell you about our, my future plans here, that to continue to build this work, we're going, I have, we're working on several more six week series that can go on for more than a year. There's so much to do with you. And then also possibly doing shorter series for people who can't take a whole hour and a quarter, but would just like to learn a little series that they can do before they go to school in the morning. So I'm, I have a series of questions here, a poll, that I very much hope you'll all stick around long enough to do this poll. I'll activate it in a couple minutes for you. I also really want to do copper rod exercises with you. And so I've asked a couple questions about that with you to see if you have the motivation and the capacity to get a rod and start working on that with us. Good people, I hope to see you next week and I hope that you'll have a wonderful time. Stay healthy, keep yourself healthy, do your inner work, share your joy with life and give up gratitude. There's a lot of good stuff going on. Thank you for watching Eurythmy as a Personal Practice. More webinars and lessons are available on my website. And remember, support this project with your donations at eurythmyonline.com. Hope to see you next week.